we're inherently in a very reactive process. Things happen, we respond. We spend like 90% of our day in that state. So this is where we put the cart before the horse and we say instead, wait a minute, I'm going to happen. Life will respond. You know, you could pick anything. What do I want to be? If I wanted life to respond to what I am, I've got to become that thing inside me now. But practicing it daily is how you continuously reiterate to life. Welcome to The Reluctant Medium, where we cover the gamut of out there conversations. With an open mind and a curious heart, we want to talk about it all. From psychic phenomena and energy medicine to beings from other star systems and out-of-body experiences, you'll find a great balance between grounded science-backed topics and others that science hasn't quite caught up to yet. I'm your host, Dr. Maria Rothenberger, a psychotherapist by trade and a reluctant spirit baby communicator. And hey, even though I'm a medium, I'm not buying everything folks are selling. I just have a voracious appetite to know more about what I call the world of the weird. Join us on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube at The Reluctant Medium. I'll see you there. The Reluctant Medium is part of the Ethereal Network. Here's another podcast you may want to check out. Hello, my soul-seeking friends. It's Shanna, the host of Sense of Soul Podcast. Enlightening conversations with like-minded souls from around the world, sharing their journey of finding their light within, turning pain into purpose, and awakening to their true sense of soul. Now go grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Reluctant Medium Podcast. I'm Dr. Maria Rothenberger, your host for the podcast, and... I'm fangirling. (laughs) I don't know if you all have ever seen me fangirl, but today is your lucky day. I am fangirling because I have the amazing Summer McStravick here today. And I just mentioned to her that in my bullet journal of lists to do today, I say interview Summer freaking McStravick because what the actual fuck is going on. This is amazing. Welcome, Summer. I did a whole episode about your manifesting technique, which we are going to be talking about today that I started doing forever ago. And I feel like I've manifested this interview today. So yay. Welcome. (laughs) Thank you, Maria. It is kind of strange (laughs) and coincidental and synchronous how this all happened. I must agree. Yes, please tell us all about you, who you are, what you do, I know, in a nutshell. <laughs> um, yeah, Good like, luck. where do I start? Well, there are these two people, <laughs> they met at college and they had me and no, just something silly. <laughs> I think, you know, we're probably going to scroll back maybe till the year 2000 or so. Certainly that was the time maybe you started to encounter flow dreaming. I was working at the time for a publishing company that people tend to know. It's called Hay House. Louise Hay, who wrote You Can Heal Your Life, she started this company and it grew and grew and grew and it became the biggest publisher of Mind, Body, Spirit titles easily all through the 90s, 2000s, 2010s. And I had a very reluctant entrance to to use your show name in this because having grown up in a multi-generational family of intuitives, mediums, gosh, my grandmother read tea leaves and palms and practiced touch for health and did automatic writing and had her channeled spirit that, you know, she's just, and then my mom became a master herbalist and an intuitive. And I mean, just like all through, and we actually tracked it I'm the oldest child, the oldest girl of the oldest girl of the oldest girl. And it goes back seven generations that we can find. And with Ancestry.com, I know I can go further, but I just haven't had the time. So back then, I was in publishing, not because I wanted to be next to Louise Hay or do any of this stuff that was in my blood. It was because I wanted to be a legitimate person in publishing and do anything but what my family was doing. I wanted to be in literature and writing, and I went to college, and I got a good degree, and I was a badass, and I'm like, yes, I'm going into publishing, and I went into their art and their design to become their art director, so all the books and card decks you have probably behind you, if you look through them, you probably 
good to see my name in there. Like I designed those things. You know how life is though. Like it, when I feel that when spirit or the universe, or God, whatever you want to call it, higher self, whenever it gives you gifts, it, it expects you to use the biggest ones you have, the most important ones, the perhaps rarest ones, the ones that are the most impactful. And so many of us, we don't end up doing that. We end up doing the things that just pay the bills because people demand it. So in my case, I was paying the bills and very happy actually doing all my art all the time, working for them. But out of the blue, in fact, getting the job was out of the blue. They weren't even hiring. I just sent them a letter in the mail. I think it was, yeah, the year 2000. And I sent them a letter saying, hey, I, I lay out books and do graphic design. If you ever want to hire somebody, I'm happy to lay out your books. I never followed up. I never called. I didn't look at ZipRecruiter. Or, there was nothing like that back then, right? Nothing. It was a very half ass attempt, in other words. Nonetheless, I get a call. And my future boss, wonderful, absolutely loved her. She says, come on in. I want to work with you. And I remember when she offered to actually hire me full time, because I said, oh, I only want to be freelance. I never want to work for a corporation, blah, 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 blah. She said, well, I want to hire you. And I said, can I work two weeks full time? And if I hate it, go back to freelance. Can you imagine you saying this to like, <laughs> chaos? I cannot believe no. what the universe put up with with me. So um <laughs> It turned out I loved it and I stayed. And before long, I was moved into a new position in the company again, without ever asking, without even knowing it was going to happen. It was a time when we were all transitioning from those little silvery CDs. Remember, <laughs> we mm -hmm. talked about that prior to this. <laughs> Everything was on CD or cassette tapes. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like the whole world is going digital. We need to download this. So we started a whole new division of the company, which was anything audio related. It turned out to be webinars and online radio, which became podcasting. All the stuff I tried to escape came barreling right back at me. And it was during this time, but I, I hope I'm not going too long with this, but I had been, because you, you can take the girl out of metaphysics, but you can't take the metaphysics out of the girl, right? Nope. So nonetheless, all this time, I had been practicing my own manifesting practice, which I called flow dreaming. I was taking the whole staff out to the warehouse where all the books were piled up on pallets to be shipped out. And at lunchtime, we'd a flow dream and we'd manifest that we'd all win the lottery because you know how in corporations, you all buy group lottery tickets? Well, oh, you yeah. do. Okay. We never won the lottery, but <laughs> word spread that there was this really cool thing. I ended up getting a book deal as an employee, which is, again, super unheard of. And at that moment, just everything changed and pivoted. It was like I finally had to say, OK, fine, I'll do this. And that's when I began producing for Wayne Dyer and Marion Williamson and Jerry Nestor Hicks. I mean, just stupendous. You know, the, I, I joke now that I got an MBA. And they paid me for it. And by the time I was released, 10 years later, flow dreaming had become a, a big thing. And I, I know why now, because at the time, manifesting and law of attraction was very narrow. And it was often said you had to just put your mind in the right place and get into the vortex and get into the space. And I'm like, I can't freaking do that. I've got two little toddlers at home. I work from 6.30 in the morning to seven o'clock at night. I need something else. And I can't meditate. I'm way too wound up and high strung and anxious and everything else. So I said, there's got to be a modality that works for people like me. One who have very busy brains, who don't have a lot of time, who have a lot of emotional energy. And from there, this technique just kind of broke through. And as a result, like thousands of people have since said, I want that one too. I'm not a meditator either, but this works. So I've just dedicated myself to teaching people how to do it ever since. Sorry, oh monologue, God. big monologue. But oh, Please, no, no, I will shut up this entire time. Please, yeah. you just keep talking. Yeah, I was one of those people that was looking for, so I was dealing with fertility issues mm -hmm. and I needed a tool. I was doing mindfulness. I was practicing mm -hmm. mindfulness. And the only reason why I was, I was a very left brain sciencey person mm -hmm. back then. 
I was doing mindfulness. The only reason why I decided to do mindfulness was because of mindfulness-based stress reduction out of UMass. I was like, okay, it's sciencey. But then I needed more. I needed more. I was settled. Now my nervous system was more settled, but I wanted to manifest a baby. I wanted to mm-hmm. manifest a baby. And I honestly do not know how I came across flow dreaming. But I remember I was training for a half marathon and I'm listening to flow dreaming on my podcast on my, you know, MP3 player or whatever, you know, my phone. And you're talking about me school and all that back then. Like, I love flow dreaming. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing these babies. This is mm-hmm. post fertility issues. But so I had mm-hmm. been flow dreaming for years mm-hmm. and it really, it was such a practical tool that it, it, you, you'd think it's metaphysical and it is, but it mm-hmm. appealed to my left sciencey brain so much because you have it yeah. broken down in this very practical way. Yeah. I I couldn't not give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. People like you in the sciencey fields, I actually have a different name for it. <gasps> I call it emotional reconditioning. Ooh, love it. Okay. Part of flow dreaming for me is very woo-woo, very manifestational. Uh, In my world, I'm actually connecting into my consciousness is located in my body. And it's also simultaneously outside of my body. Probably this is your experience when you talk to babies. When I talk to persons who are disembodied, I often don't even know. I'm like, I don't know if you're in a body or not. How could I tell? It's just a consciousness. It's an awareness that is eternal. And it could be, I don't know where you're located. And you could be bi-located or multi-located for all I know. So that's the one aspect, but if people don't want to go there, I I say, okay, let's pull back and we'll just talk about the emotional component of this. Mm -hmm. And this is where um, flow dreaming really divests itself from law of attraction in in many ways, because whenever I was practicing earlier versions of manifesting, again, popular in the seventies and eighties and nineties and two thousands, I always felt like I would do the thing, but there was no connection. There was no response. It was like thud. You know, like, okay, I'm mindful, thud, I'm doing my affirmations, but it all felt so locked inside of me. But when I realized that my emotions were an actual language, it wasn't something, because remember, creative visualization was really big and Shakti Gawain, and there was a lot, but it was still locked inside my head, my visualization or my words. Remember, there was a trend for a while to speak things very precisely and very exactly, like, This is the color of the house and the numbers on the front door and there's a little bell. And again, it was all locked in the brain. Like I love my brain. It's very good. It's very smart, but that's not the part that needs to connect. The wild part, the heart part, the emotion part, the energy part is just as strong. So I abandoned a lot of the mental constructs around manifesting and said, look, your emotional self is the strongest, hottest, biggest part of you. And this certainly as a therapist, everything that's locked inside of us is locked in an emotional way. Every giant decision we've ever made, I'm going to get married. I'm going to quit the job. I'm going to break up. I'm going to do that weird thing that I didn't even think I was going to do, but something made me. The brain spins around and tries to tell you all the time what to do. And it's very domineering and very commanding. And it makes promises. If you do this, you'll be safe. If you do that, you'll be okay makes all these bargains constantly until this other part of you, by the way, I call the brain the king and I call the heart the queen. It's not a gender thing. It's more just a a dualistic way of expressing physical and non-physical or linear and and non-linear. Okay. So the heart says, I feel things. And this is a language. I lock your memories in this language. I guide your life in this language, but you never trust me. You never listen to me. You discard me. You make me a second-class citizen to this king mind. Yet when I was in the flow state, and we'll talk about getting into flow and flow dreaming, all I wanted to do was just express. I feel I am, like in your case, and I've worked with people with fertility too, and we'll go in and say things like, I feel so complete and bountiful and gorgeous and heavy and, and, and fertile, you know, and verdant. I feel like green vines growing up like Jack's beanstalk to heaven. I feel like I am guiding. I am mothering. I feel the essence of mothering. And it's an emotional thing. When I started to feel emotions, I realized 
it was like throwing a ball through frictionless space. Like it could just go to the end of the universe. It was connecting. And I started to research that a lot. Like why emotion? And I realized that emotion of all the ways of communicating here on earth, it's the only one that's actually universal. Like I know what my dog is thinking. I can feel it. I look in their eyes. I feel it. I know. If I'm on a stage talking to an audience, I know the vibe of that audience. I can feel where everybody's at. Nobody's opening their mouth and talking to me. I feel it. Go to the other side of the world. Can't talk the language. I can feel the expression. Someone walks into my office and they want to be hired. And I'm like, you don't really want to be hired. You're just desperate. And you hate being here right now. You want to get this over with. I can tell. Meanwhile, their mouth is saying all the right things. Right? So there's this, we call it emotion, but it's also energy. So I often say energetic emotion. So to go back to emotional reconditioning, a big fundamental part of flow dreaming is if I can start cultivating these emotions of who I'm becoming, I'm not there yet but I want to be this person. I want to be absolutely financially secure. That's an emotion, actually. It's not about money. It's not a physical thing. The sense of, because we all want money for certain reasons, right? Money makes me feel secure, makes me feel safe, makes me feel like I can breathe, makes me feel like pressure is off, makes me feel like I don't have to worry that I've done it. I'm like, go for those feelings. If you go for those feelings and you start cultivating them and implanting them in you over and over again, what happens is it's like a stacking effect. One, the emotional conduits of your own mind, and you've practiced mindfulness. So the more you practice mindfulness or meditation, your neural pathways actually change. The neuroplasticity of your brain becomes different. You create new channels. So I say, what? let's start creating new emotional channels, ones that don't have all that lack thinking, scarcity thinking. You're abundant or you're fertile, you're a mother, you're caring, you're rewarded, you're guiding. Like, what does that feeling feel like? Can you become that? Can you express that? So you start to change from this physiological level, but then if you take it to the next woo-woo space, when you change yourself emotionally and physiologically, whatever you're giving to the world at any given moment, the world is reflecting right back to you. And that's the woo-woo part, right? So everything around me right now is in some way or another, a reflection of me in some way, the good stuff and the crappy stuff. So when I see crappy stuff, I'm like, okay, something what's going on here. So I always work on this inner part first, knowing that once this changes, the outer world can lock on and stick and stay with that new person. You sound like you want to say something. No, I'm just so agreeing. Okay. (laughs) Because I I felt this, I mean, truly, I felt this at a visceral level when I was practicing flow dreaming heavily for fertility stuff and and business stuff too. I felt it. And that is, we're going to obviously talk about what flow dreaming is and and all the components and how to do it. But it really was this emotional shift. I felt like There isn't any way that, yes, my emotions are definitely changing and being changed on a visceral level, but I think is also Mm -hmm. traveling to my brain. And when I called into your show, freaking (laughs) out that I was hearing babies or seeing them, I asked you specifically, I've been flow dreaming for a while now. Did something happen to my brain? (laughs) And you're like, you were so kind, honestly. You were telling me about beyond the brain, et cetera. But I really yeah. felt this change at a visceral level that you're talking about. It really, flow dreaming is not meditation at all. It is a beautiful emotional shift that yeah. you just have to experience. It's amazing. So I'm just like, yes, to everything you're saying. That's yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the more you practice the emo- the new emotions of who you are, On the physiological level, it's actually rewiring your brain. So things like negativity bias, scarcity thinking, lack thinking, all the stuff that we habitually encounter that holds us in place. Once we start practicing, okay, what's the contrast to use some Abraham Hicks terminology, but what's the opposite to that? And and you might be thinking, I'm going to use the babies because babies, right? Because you... I will never be pregnant. I've been trying so hard. It's like so long. There's something wrong with me. It's not meant for me. Like, okay. That is a whole slew of lack thinking right there. And I know how you got that because that actually truthfully has been your lived experience. You are not wrong. 
You are totally right. I'm like, you feel that way. It's because you have a real strong reason to. However, think about a feedback loop, a self-fulfilling prophecy, a snowball. The more you feel that, the more you are continuing to validate that to the universe. So you have to almost like bilocate for a minute. You recognize the reality. But then there's another part of you says, I see that reality. I want something different. And frankly, that's growth in every area of your life. I see that I don't have enough money now, but I need something different. So you're aware of present, but you're also simultaneously constantly, I call it creating a, a, an emotional blueprint or, or an energetic blueprint for the universe. You're creating a blueprint saying, but this is what we're building. And I say, it's just like a house. If you just throw stuff, if you just throw a whole bunch of construction people on a plot and say, build me a house, it's going to be the jankiest house and it's going to be awful. It's not going to have, there'll be no bathrooms. There'll be 19 bedrooms. Nobody It's going to be like, it's going to look like a cake falling over. <laughs> but if you give them a blueprint, they're like, we know what to follow. So I look at physical and non-physical as physical stuff that we do, the actual lived experiences we're having. But then there's also got to be a non-physical aspect, the blueprint. This is what we're going for. These are the experiences we want to have. So I am programming through flow dreaming and this work, I'm programming and, and creating a blueprint for my life to read off of me. So on the one hand, I've got stuff I don't want, but I don't want my life continuing to read that from me. I want to keep giving it the blueprint. And the more I practice the blueprint and cultivate it and do the energy, like people go to the gym. They do fasting and green juices. They take care of their body. They do Sudoku for their mind. I'm like, what are you doing for your spiritual self? Oh, I go to church. Is that enough? Oh, I, I'm told it's enough. I'm like, is that enough? <laughs> you know, there's your body and your mind and your spirit. What are you doing as a practice for your spiritual, emotional, larger being? And so flow dreaming comes in and like, Tell your life every single day, this is who I am. This is who I am. Um, mold yourself to fit me. Align to me. Oh, I love that so much. That just feels so correct. Yeah. So it, it sent me the last, I don't know, 20 years. I've been on a, a meandering course, but I spent a long time focused on inner power, because I realized that once you start telling people, you can create a blueprint for your life, and it will start to read and create from that. But then we've become so accustomed to reacting to everything around us. I'm sure you see this again in your practice. This happened. How did you feel about it? This happened. How did you feel about it? Which is good. All cool, wonderful questioning. But are we, what's happening is life is still just bobbing along, bringing a whole shitload of sorry of stuff in and other people's stuff is usually just random misdirected their health issues their arguments their jockeying for position their scarcity like most of our problems that we sweat and cry about are other people's problems that we love them and so we're part of it with them but we're inherently in a very reactive process things happen we respond things happen we respond we spend like 90 percent of our day in that state so this is where we put the cart before the horse and we say instead, wait a minute, I'm going to happen. Life will respond. So we completely flip it and I call it finding your power leaks. And, you know, you could pick anything. What do I want to be? If I wanted life to respond to what I am, I've got to become that thing inside me now. This is like now yeah. getting into kind of like the mantra we all hear now, right? But practicing it daily is how you continuously reiterate to life. This is what I am. I am healthy. My mind is clear. I'm loved and adored. I'm admired by my friends, by my family, by myself. I have all my needs met. I'm not lacking anything. I have opportunities overflowing around me. I have everything I need for whatever my next steps or interests are. That's the heart of abundance, right? Yep. But I'm not waiting for life to give me permission to feel that way because life is a random mess of 6 billion people. Hmm. So I have to tell life, this is who I am. All you 6 billion people, you there's so many possibilities from them to figure out how to match that feeling. So it's a big power move as well. 
I know we're going all over the place. So I'm trying to condense it the shortest <laughs> amount of time possible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know there's anyway. so much. There's so much. And it just, again, it just feels so correct to me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, man, how much t- do you have 10 hours right now? Can we <laughs> talk for 10? Is that okay? As long <laughs> take- as I can stay awake. I did warn you, I am jet lagging so hard right now. <laughs> After this. I'm lying down and watching a season finale of something. I don't know what. Oh, good. good <laughs> Shogun. That's what I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break for the podcast. But when we come back, let's get into the nitty gritty of what this beautiful thing is, Flow Dreaming. Okay. Welcome back to The Reluctant Medium. I get to be here today with Summer freaking McStravick. What? And we are going to talk about <laughs> now what this beautiful thing is, this flow dreaming manifesting tool. For those of you who listen to this podcast, you already know in my manifesting series, the whole episode, the second episode in that series was dedicated to flow dreaming. It is my absolute favorite tool. And I feel so, so lucky that I get to talk with you directly today. So please do enlighten us. What is flow dreaming? How does one do it? Okay. I know I've built it up so much. It's like, just tell us what it is. And how to do it. Okay. So that was another reason that this is a perfect modality for a lot of people who it's like yoga is you do the, the physical work and it stretches your body, but there's also a whole philosophy behind it. So I've been sharing a bit of the philosophy, kind of like the big picture, but the technique is something you practice daily and doing just a few minutes of it seems to be enough. I mean, just I'm I'm my own test guinea pig here and my life is pretty, pretty good as a result. In a nutshell, because I can, I could just launch into hours on any of the three parts of it, but nutshell. Okay. Three parts, strangely stuff you've already heard, already know. It's just the, the synthesis of them coming together that seem to create something new. First part of flow dreaming is daydreaming, right? That's the dreaming part of it. Daydreaming is something that's built into us. Like we come in as babies, like we come in, in fact, even in the womb, they suggest that a large part of the development is kind of daydreaming. I really believe that coming into a physical body, you are not cut off with big scissors from cosmic connection. You don't have to struggle for it. You don't have to like try and prove yourself to have the connection with God or source. It's got to be built in. So I look at daydreaming as like your email that's always checking into the big world wide web in the background. It's just always there. It's always checking. It's always there. And most things in human bodies have multiple functions. Yeah. I always say the tongue, right? It tastes, it helps you swallow and eat. It helps you talk. It does so many things. Daydreaming is also multi-layered like that. And part of it, I believe, is to connect into something greater. Because when you daydream, something really distinctive happens you disconnect from present time. You lose track of where you are, who you are. That's a hallmark of where was I? Oh my God. I always joke that I pull up in my driveway and I'm like, I hope I stopped at all the stoplights because I have no memory of the last 10 minutes of my driving because I am, part of me is here monitoring. Part of me is checking my email, like my soul, my spirit, my greater self, my greater consciousness email. So you're going to go into this daydreaming state. Meaning, frankly, just use your imagination, like literally. And people are like, isn't there something specific? I'm like, no, I want you to just imagine, just let go. Just just like when you're daydreaming, you're lying asleep at night and you're almost going to fall asleep and your mind's like doing stuff. I'm like, that's what I want right there. Just daydream. Yes. Second, flow. What happens is, okay, so flow is a recognized psychological state pioneered by Dr. Mihai Chichen Mihai, which you may know of. He's a father of positive psychology. The thing with his work is he took flow state and he really just applied it to physical things around us. The perfect golf game, the scientific breakthrough, those peak moments. I'm like, what if I actually take the same state, but I'm not practicing any physical thing, but I'm actually going and trying to connect to something bigger, to consciousness, to soul, to spirit. I mean, if you can apply it to your golf game, you could certainly apply it to that. So when you're daydreaming, you end up shifting into what we call flow state. And the hallmarks again are you forget where you are, you forget how much time is going by. 
there's a few other characteristics which I try to cultivate whenever someone's practicing this. I say, think about it like this. Time and space and everything we know has a natural direction right now. We are flowing in it. Our planet is flowing around the sun. There's no resistance. It's just going. Time. I was born. I'm growing older and I'm going to pass on. I can't go backwards. I'm locked in. It's just happening. In physics, they call it the arrow of time, meaning it's like it's been shot and it will continue to move forward until, well, eternity. So I think about flow as this kind of natural, God-given direction that I'm in already. And it has no friction. It has no resistance. It is me scooting forward into my personal growth and development, my fullest expression and expansion of myself without anything getting in its way. In a way, it's like an idealism. But if you can actually feel that through your imagination, and I'll always evoke like a river. I'm like, see the flowing water. See the water coming down the mountain, moving to the sea. Is anything getting in its way? You're like, yeah, there's rocks and boulders. I'm like, do you see how the water flows right around them? It doesn't get in its way. It just makes some movements. But nothing is really getting in its way. Knows where it's going. What if all of us as individual consciousnesses also know where we're going? Some greater expression that we maybe don't know in our human brains. But there's a path and there is an ideal path. And there's a path without any resistance, friction, setbacks, hardship, lack, etc. That's what I want to flow into. I want to hook into that. I want to connect with that. A roller coaster you know, the little roller coaster carts, like you're just hooked in, you're just going. So if you can get that visceral feeling, it's like communicating to the universe. I recognize that there is a state where all of my needs are met, where everything is right there for me. Nothing is in the way. Because as humans, we tend to think everything's in our way. Not enough money, not enough people loving us, not enough good health. We have a catalog of all the crap that's in our way. But there is this other state that is real and true and The opposite would be everything is blocked, total resistance, absolute, just stuck. But I I never flow in that. (laughs) I never go sit in that stuck place. I get enough of that in like reality. So I go to flow. (laughs) So you'll just naturally connect into that. So you've got flow and you got daydreaming. Now, what do you do when you're there? That's where the emotion comes in. Like we talked about earlier, the emotional reconditioning. This is where I have a bullhorn to the universe, to my higher self, to Whatever you believe in, um, spirits or angels or higher me, what your higher self, all of you. The bullhorn is here's how I feel. I am seeking to become in a state of absolute peace and comfort in my life, which is totally okay to ask for, by the way. Like there's tons of growth to be had in comfort. In fact, a lot of people can't stay in comfort because they don't trust it. And so they go back into hardship again. That's a whole other interview. Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. here we are. I want absolute peace and comfort. So how do I tell that? I feel it. I show it to the universe by feeling this is what total peace and comfort feels like. And I begin exuding it. It's just like opening your heart. If you've ever worked with heart chakra or any kind of, again, something, there's a lot of modalities that this relates to an outflowing and outpouring of this. And as I do this, I am imprinting now and, and everything we ever feel or think is an imprint. Like it stays with us for eternity. So everybody be very careful. Stop watching the scary movies, okay? They're in you for eternity. <laughs> and it becomes literally part of you. So I'm creating this in me. So it becomes part of me day after day after day. And it's like putting scoops of sand on a sandcastle day after day. I'm going to have a very large part of me that feels security and peace, comfort, And so now the world around me looks at me and says, huh, this person is 90% peace, comfort, and security, 10% chaos and lack thinking. We're probably going to start matching or aligning to the comfort because that's what I've been building. That's what I'm showing it. Standing in front of a mirror, like in the world around me is a mirror. It's going to, it's going to just respond exactly to what it's seeing in me. So that's what I do. I bring these three things together in a five minute, 15 minute process. I have all these recorded flow dreams that are longer. They're like 15 minutes, a little relaxation, just help you daydream and unhook. 
But once you practice it for 20 years, <laughs> as I have, and it sounds like maybe you have too, you can go in and out in 30 seconds, a minute at a time. So I do this daily. Now I don't spend like 15 minutes. I notice a lack thought come in and I go, mm -mm, I'm not giving that to life. And I'll pull in and I'll be like, uh, this is what I'm really telling you instead. And I drop in and I come back out again. But it, everybody starts to practice at a different place. And sometimes it's easier to give that yourself that 15 minutes with a guided audio flow dream because it gets you there. So that's it <sighs> in a nutshell. Oh, <sighs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more to it too. I, I yeah. want to talk about it from a place of an experiencer of flow dreaming because it was so new to me and it's so different than the mindfulness practice that I was learning. It, mindfulness is being aware, watching, be observing, but you are neutral, 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 neutral. Yes. So flow dreaming, honestly, I call it playtime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm about to play and I, I still, and I'm a meditator now that I don't like guidance, but flow dreaming, your voice is so much freaking fun. <laughs> the way that you help, I'm really, I'm like a massive fan, obviously, but I'm really not trying to blow smoke. I'm honestly, this is, it feels like so much play. In fact, on your website, I'm looking at it right now, you explain what flow is. And there's an image there of exactly what I pictured as my flow. And I'm like, what the frig? Because <laughs> uh, um, a lot of us are going and we are literally seeing the same spatial phenomena, I guess you could say. So Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. that's a trip. Okay. So that is how when folks, when you go to flowdreaming.com, you're going to see this, we can click on what is flow dreaming. You'll see this image. This is what I see. And so it's this stream like a, it looks like a tube, a big tube. I'm surrounded by this golden yeah. sparkly light and I am jumping in and out of it. Like, like a dolphin would. Yes. Yes. Back yes. in and out of this. It feels so much fun. <laughs> yeah. And so the feeling that I get is not only am I not made a serious meditator and neutralize the mind and neutralize the thoughts. I am having yeah. a freaking great time. Yeah. And now I was telling you before that I started doing a few weeks ago, your prosperity challenge, which is a, a, a 16 day or 14 day, 14 um, days, 14 yes. day, mm -hmm. 14 day flow dreaming challenge mm -hmm. for prosperity. And I went right into it. I mean, it, it was like, Oh my God, this is my familiar place. So I see what you mean that you don't need that relaxation part or whatever. You just, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in my flow. There it is right here. And I'm playing yeah. and I'm creating. Yeah. And it, I, it used to be back in the day when I first started this, I will never forget this in the imagery for this flow dream. <clears throat> you have this fountain of wealth, right? You have us imagine this fountain of, of wealth mm -hmm. and it's like just chucking coins and money and things into the air, yeah. I couldn't do it back then. Mm. I was like, well, that's not, that's not, no way. Why would I deserve that? And you would address that deserving yeah. in your floating yes. challenge. And after doing this several times, I'm freaking like chucking it myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm swimming in the wealth. It's amazing what it feels like. It's so much fun. When people begin to flow dream, please do not be discouraged if you don't feel that intense emotion playfulness right away. It's yeah. gonna come. It's so yeah. much stinking fun. And your voice is just so playful and fun in this too. It's really it gets the emotion going. Good. Um, yeah. yeah, people yeah. have been confused in the past and left me bad reviews. They're like, you talk too fast. You've got way too much animation. And I'm like, that's because it's not a meditation. I am not right. trying to hypnotize you or put you to sleep. I want to get you geared up and feeling something, damn it. Yes. So, yeah. And I also tell people, just like you said, the first couple times you do this, you might just detach and unhook for a minute and lose track and then come back because your dog barked or your kid screamed or I'm like, that's normal. Like it, it, there's a break in period, but like you say, unlike with meditation, it's funny. Cause like partially I feel kind of Buddhist about it. I, I don't think we need to crave things. 
And I very much appreciate the sense of just be mindful and content with where you are, and then you won't experience suffering. On the other hand, we came here to be physical beings. And that means that we're being continuously propelled by desires, like desires to fall in love, desires to have a family, desires to see what we can make of ourselves and our skills and what our potential is. That's all desire. So in flow dreaming, I want us to get to a place where part of us is like, I'm cool where I am and with what I have, very Buddhist, but my desires, my potential, I want to experience it and cultivate it. So I always say I'm right there in the middle of the teeter-totter between those two extremes. And if I can find that one point in the middle for me, that has been a golden So I have people who practice their meditation and then immediately follow it with their flow dreaming work (laughs) because it kind of gives you both, right? You don't get so ahead of yourself and into anxiety about what you don't have and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, meditate, be mindful. That's good. But don't forget to tell life, this is who I am. This is who I am. Go match me. Go find me. Go align the things that fill me. So when you do this all the time, like, okay, so the prosperity challenge, by and large, probably the most popular set of flow dreams I've ever put out. I mean, over, over time and for good reason, right? Cause it, it's worked really well. I have very effective. So, I have hundreds of even more people who have written to me, this is what's happened. Cause it tends to just poke holes in all of these limiting, I hate, I don't like to use the word limiting thoughts or limiting beliefs, but I call them ceilings. We can't see beyond the ceiling until one day somebody punches a hole and you're like, oh, there's a blue sky up there. I could go up there. I'm like, yeah, go up there. Everybody else is up there. And you're like, oh, I need to be up there too. Right. So it it helps you get to that. On that same note, this summer I'm running, I call it one brilliant thing. Something I've done for two summers in a row, doing it for the third time. This time, the emphasis, I'm calling it the summer of prosperity, because I just thought, you know, it'd be nice to revisit that for everybody. So if anybody listening wants to join me, it's totally free. We get together five days a week in June, July, and August, and we just strictly go in and we flow around stuff in your pockets with money. And I know it sounds crass when I say that. It's not crass. It's It's an imaginary way of saying I am full to overflowing. Life wants to reward me. Life wants to give to me. I mean, in my particular spirituality, if life, the spirit, God, or universe source gave me this life, as a parent myself, I want to give my kids all the resources they need. I don't know what they're going to do with them or even if they'll do any much of anything, but I hope they will. I'm certainly not going to say, no, you can't have that. No, I'm not going to do that. No, 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 no. (laughs) Life around me is saying, I have everything for you. I've got 6 billion people. I've got oxygen in your lungs. I've got food on your table. I gave you a brain. I gave you so much. Mm -hmm. It's just ourselves, other people. We're the ones who put our own restrictions on. So when I stuff my pockets with money in like the prosperity challenge, what I'm really saying is I have the resources and I know they're here and they're all around me. Open my eyes to see them. Make them smack me in the face. Make me stumble over them. They're so close and obvious to me. I get very close and personal in my conversations with yes. spirit, as you can tell. Yes. <laughs> yep. yep, casual. Yeah. That's right. Tell it like yeah. it is. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. when you said stuff pockets, I immediately heard I'm safe and secure. That's yeah. that's immediately what I heard. Not like the crass, like, oh, she's all just about the money. No, yeah. not at all. Not at all. I heard I am safe and secure. That feels so good. That is what I call an emotional endpoint. More language from the world of flow dreaming land. Mm. All the all the physical things that we settle on are just points in the route to get to an emotional endpoint that we actually want. So when most of us say I need money or I need a family, right? I want mm-hmm. to have children to go back again. What we're really saying is there's a sense of completion. There's a sense of nurturing. There's a sense of growth and new horizons that I'm craving. Or with money, I need security. I want to feel relaxed. Other people say, no, money means freedom. It means mm-hmm. freedom. No, Not working, not having to. 
I am unbound. And yep. oddly enough, security and freedom, they seem opposite. Mm-hmm. They're actually mm-hmm. almost the same thing. Yeah. So you're going for those emotional endpoints is what you, you just instinctively knew that. Cause you've yeah. been doing it, you know, you know, I've been, doing. I've been doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. summer in my head. Oh. So great. Okay. So now you have many other things that you do, but I'm curious where, what's new. What, so this summer you're doing the one, what is it? One great thing. One, one brilliant, thing. one brilliant thing that people can go to mm-hmm. is flowdreaming.com. People can find. Yeah. That? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Go to, if you go to the website, flowdreaming.com and you sign up, I give you a couple free flow dreams to work with, but really you're getting on my mailing list <laughs> and yep. then I can start telling yep. you, here's how you can join one brilliant thing. Again, totally free, no strings attached. It's not like a webinar where I sell you at the end. I'm like, no, I want to see people have remarkable results. That's my whole goal for it. So that would be a really great thing to, to do this summer. I also have a free tutorial. I have an app. So if you have a phone, Just download Mm -hmm. the Flow Dreaming app and it will teach you. And I've always taught Flow Dreaming 100% for free uh, Mm -hmm. since the beginning. The things that I charge for are working with me one-on-one, which I take people through a year-long process of just busting through. And or if you want to get Flow Dreams, I have like 350 of them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All kinds. But it's like meditation. You can meditate by yourself. Or you can use a guided meditation, flow dream on your own or flow dream with something where I'm holding your hand and and doing kind of the heavy lifting, like see this, feel this. I point you what to do, but it's recommend. I recommend. (laughs) I can flow dream on my own too, but there's just something about, I just feels, it feels very playful and good. So um, yes, recommend. (laughs) Oh my gosh, Summer. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom (laughs) and just for being you. Thank you. So appreciate you. Thank you. I mean, this is this is why I finally reluctantly let <laughs> life guide me into this because I had to come, I had that come to Jesus moment, which is yeah. what is the one thing you do that is different and rare and special and that people need? And we chose you to be an ideal spokesperson. Are you going to do it? Or did we misplace our trust in you or our faith in you? And I had to say, oh, geez, if you put it like that. <laughs> I'll okay. do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, and you're changing yeah. lives too. You're helping change lives by this one thing that the universe placed on you. And I'm trying to own the same thing. I hope I'm changing as you lives are too. <laughs> you are doing the same thing. So, I very much feel you. Thanks so much, Summer. Appreciate you. Thank you, Maria. It's been lovely. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Thanks for joining the Reluctant Medium podcast today. I hope you found this episode helpful. You can connect with me at thereluctantmedium.us where you can find lots of free content as well as readings. You can also find free meditations on the Insight Timer app and join me and lots of like-minded folks on the Miracles Happen community on the Mighty Networks app. Just search for the Miracles Happen community. All links are also in the show notes. Thanks so much again for joining today. I will see you next time. This podcast is part of the Ethereal Network of Podcasts. Look for us also on Ethereal TV.